Hey there again, it's Bob Chu from Stewart and Isla Mirada Boatworks and another latest launch. Another beautiful Carbon and Negra 24 Isla Mirada. Uh, second station boat, as you can see, quite obviously, powered with 300 Yamaha, power pole move trolling motor, and just a slew of options that this particular customer chose. Uh, starting with the ice blue hull, white deck, and a kind of unique feature, we did a ice blue cockpit sole, all the non-skid area. Um, so that's, that's different. Goes back to the ice blue console, frigid rigid cooler. We'll talk about that when we get below. But here's the exciting thing. This second station, very unique for us with this buggy top. First one we've ever done. It is removable. It provides a ton of shade. It's a really unique look. So you would commonly see a buggy top like this on an offshore sport fish, for example. But frankly, this boat gets used so often offshore. I mean, we have an uh, owner here locally in the Stewart area that is hammering the sailfish this winter in his 24 Isla Mirada with no top. So as we move down from the buggy top, uh, you'll see forward-facing rod holders has become more of a, a, a common sight on our boats. Again, you can picture why you've got your rod here. You sight something, slide that rod out, and whew, you're right on it. Um, so it's very cool. A couple cup holders. As you know, a sliding top that's now out of the way. But one option we've relatively recently introduced is the sliding seat in this second station. So it's all the way in the aft position right now. I can sit here, I can put my feet up on, on the corners if I'm trolling offshore, um, or you can slide it further forward and have it function more of a leaning post on a rougher day where you want a little, be locked in a little bit more. So it's it's very cool option available. Belly band option as well with cushion. As far as you get your controls here, it's pretty much everything you have below, you have above. So we'll start with, of course, the Simrad unit here. Yamaha CL5 gauge start-stop switch for the Yamaha. Your binnacle control, of course. Scan strut phone charger here, which we also have below. Black Edson wheel controls for your jack plate and controls for the Razor light bar here on the second station. It's a complete boat here. Um, there's actually a glove box right here at my waist that tilts out. It's mostly for rigging components, but in this case, we actually installed a VHF there. So it, it's really multifunctional, super clean, super low profile. If you take this off, which is just with four uh, Allen head bolts, boom, boom, you're down to the level of, I think, I think this knob on the steering wheel is the highest item on the second station. You could put this in dry storage in a marina and inside and they're not going to charge you any more than if you just had a hard top. We've experienced that feedback already from customers. So the visibility here is second to none. I think we build so many second station boats both on the steward side and the Isla Mirada side that we tend to kind of almost take it for granted. But if you're inclined at all to want to be able to see anything, whether it's weed lines offshore or current rips or inshore, of course, there's nothing like the visibility that you get here in the second station. So how's this for a different look? All the hatches open, all the blue carbon underneath, um, really gives you a feel for a lot of things, how much storage there is on this boat, um, and just the total functionality of the layout. Uh, forward anchor hatch. Oh, let me start forward of that power pole move trolling motor. Then the forward anchor hatch, substantial size hatch with plenty of room for probably 300 yards, a half inch rope. Um, then you move to the full beam storage compartment, has a particular spot molded in it for a bucket for your cast net. I've said this before, but it uh, bears repeating. A three and a half gallon bucket will fit below the recessed area so you can put it a recessed uh, plate there, 
and your bucket and net are completely out of sight and you have a flush surface, full beam width for storing, typically day bags is what I've found customers using that for. If you use a five gallon bucket, okay, you can't put that fill in plate and it'll stick above, but you still have big surfaces on either side and all the way around the bucket for a ton of storage. Moving aft, 35 gallon live well. Uh, you can control the amount of water in here with the drain and the fill, which are both adjustable. No stand pipe, no, no fill sticking out into the live well to kill your baits. Super clean, really well done. Uh, the gutter system is deep like a skiff, and it all drains aft and onto the cockpit, so that's, that's clean. Then you move to really, which is, whew, we were known for nice rod lockers before that held seven and a half foot rods. These now hold nine and a half foot rods. Nice waterfall drop hatch so that when you put rods in, take them out, it's a straight move, none of this twisting and, and tweaking the rod to get it in. So you could put fly rods in here. Um, you can choose, there's optional racks on the back side. Again, because we're semi-custom, that's an example of something not even on the price list, but we have rod rack storage here for your fly rods so the reels can sit there without having to bang on each other. Tons of room for way more rods. Um, sea deck bottom, nice and cushiony. So yeah, it's just a super cool design. Um, takes a little effort to make these hatches this way. And they're all double-sided. The old boat all had single-sided hatches. So the, the gel coat finish on the underside, easy for maintenance. Um, it's designed around the stereo system where we specifically designed it. You can do two 8 8 uh, inch speakers here and a 10 inch sub in the center. So a lot of thought went into the design process of this forward deck. Moving back, we have the uh, in-floor compartment here, which is standard as a storage compartment. An option is to insulate it and plumb it with a diaphragm pump to discharge it overboard, which most customers have chosen to do. This being really the, conceived as the main fish box on the boat. As you move back, this has the optional 55 quart frigid rigid half moon cooler. It's also color matched to meet the, to match the cockpit sole. I should also mention the standard cooler is a 60 quart frigid rigid cooler. Also, it comes with a cushion, this particular one. Well, it's not on the boat today, but yes, that's standard. Going into the console, same console we've had for years. Um, won't go into a lot of detail, but when you get here and you come to the shop and see the boat, you'll see wiring as good as anybody's wiring in the industry and better than most. Um, this is also the area where the C-Zone digital switching box and backup system is, your battery switches, chargers for the trolling motor batteries, so forth, and also your charger for your power pole move trolling motor. Super clean, there's a shelf there covering typically four group 31 AGM Odyssey batteries. That would feed the 36 volt trolling motor as well as the boat start and house. Super nice, you need to come see it for yourself. It, it, you'll, you'll be pleased for sure. So back at the helm here, it is blacked out uh, with vinyl. His choice, of course. It does have a 19-inch Simrad on it, which is a little bigger than normal for a single, but it fits perfectly well. Super nice. Yamaha CL5 Fusion Stereo Head. The controls for the Simrad. This boat has Seakeeper Ride on it. We can talk about that in a minute. Cup holders, your digital switching system here, voltmeters, again for start battery, crank battery, and your trolling motor batteries. It's very cool, it's right here, it's no guesswork as to where it is. Edson wheel again, controls for the jack plate and the spotlight, Yamaha binnacle, everything you'd expect that we, we have on these helms. Um, I forgot to mention that you can access the second station through these steps, a step pad here, 
or you can access from the front, which is becoming more common with steps on the front, step on the cooler and right inside. Um, then as we move, well, I shouldn't forget this here. Yeah, glove box here, open this up, tilt the steps out and gives you access to your, uh, like in this case, power pole pump. Um, it could be uh, Minn Kota Raptors, whatever the case might be. Most of that is here and the wiring is, you know, exquisite. Now we move to the 40 gallon leaning post live well option. The boat comes standard with that 35 gallon forward live well, 25 gallon aft live well we haven't got to yet. So you have 60 gallons of bait, it's down the center line and it's evenly balanced fore and aft. If you're really into live bait, hey, throw another 40 gallons at it, you have a 100 gallon live well. This live well, while it takes up a fair amount of space in the cockpit, it's also an awesome live well. It's fed typically by one pump. You can opt to feed it by two pumps. Um, the drainage system, you can go with a hooker system if you want for the live, all the live wells for the saltwater washdown. Uh, this has two pumps feeding into it. It also um, has, of course, the clear acrylic top lid. Uh, the unique feature on this one, this backrest is removable. Typically, it's a fixed backrest, standard, with four rod holders, two cup holders, and a small rigging tray. On this particular one, this is a removable backrest where you can pull it out, turn it around, reinsert it, and then there's a cushion that goes over the live well in case you want to look aft while you're fishing. So now in the aft part of the cockpit here, a couple things I overlooked on the leaning post live well. One is there's a substantial uh, storage system on the front, tilts out, and large uh, 3600 series four trays in there, really nice. Also access to the plumbing. On the back side, you know, the, the window, you know, there's been all sorts of fancy terms for it, but yeah, hey, you can watch your bait, make sure they're healthy. Certainly you can see them from here, but why not be able to see them from there as well? So it's kind of a cool thing. When we get to the aft deck, don't want to forget the drains in the corners. Um, I should mention the under gunnel, uh, the length of the boat, that's nine foot four. So you can put, uh, just like a skiff, you can put fly rods or any long rod, you know, within sight, completely visible to you um, and completely accessible, no hiding the tips and so forth. Um, you can do the fly rods forward or aft because we have receivers for them in both the bulkheads. Very cool. Saltwater wash down on a hose bar, freshwater wash down on a hose bar. Um, nice. I mean, it's, it's a fish boat and it's a fully capable, as we've talked about, offshore, inshore fish boat. We did the same thing here with the hatches. We left them open so you can see the great storage and access. Start with a 25 gallon live well, uh, dead center. Again, adjustable height of water, adjustable fill and drain. Um, deep gutters like skiff gutters, like the whole boat has, of course. Storage compartment on either side. They're not insulated. They can be insulated. Uh, the intention was this was more storage as opposed to fish box, but yeah, so we can talk about that as you get a little closer to ordering your boat. Um, again, you can see the non-skid cockpit sole that was unique and it's not even on the price list, but yeah, we can do that if you really want to set it off that no problem whatsoever. As we go aft, um, oh, of course, this has cushions that fit on these three top of these three compartments. They slide in the tracks, seat all the way across. Most people, most people are getting just this cushion and you can fish around it, leave it in place. If you want, of course, the backrest is easily removable. The arms oscillate for storage forward. So it works really well. And let's not forget one of the most important parts of any boat is bilge access. Uh, I'm not gonna take it out because it's a little difficult to see on the video, but you have two latches, it's not hinged, it removes, set it to the side, and you can go down and have a picnic in that bilge. Everything is accessible. Um, it's all laid out, uh, spent a lot of time 
on the bilge, laying it out in a very common sense manner. You will love if you're a bilge guy or somebody that has to keep his boat running and not have somebody else do it for you, access to that bilge, as well as the rest of the wiring. But actually, that bilge in particular is, is superb. Uh, and talking about the power, the 300 Yamaha, Yamaha integrated steering motor has pretty much become the standard on our 24 Murata. The jack plate, of course, the Atlas jack plate is standard. The power poles, pretty commonly six foot, a pair of six foot power poles. And oh, I forgot to mention, yes, Yamaha's introduced the 350, so you'll probably see more and more of those as maybe standard on this boat, I, I would think so. The last thing I want to talk to, uh, talk to you about on this boat is something you can't see because it's in the shadows. This boat has the Seakeeper Ride system on board. I'll start by saying I'm an older guy. I'm not really a, a cutting edge technological uh, guy that gets excited about the latest and the greatest thing. I'm kind of old school that, hey, I know how to run a boat and I've run them for too many years. And why would I need something that's that technical, apt to potentially break, could be a maintenance problem. I just don't see the benefit of it. Well, that was all before I rode in this boat. I rode in this boat at the Miami Boat Show just last week, and I will tell you the conditions we were in were not conducive to bay boat, bay boating. Uh, the last two days it was blowing 30 miles an hour from the south, hitting a seawall, coming back out, boats of all sizes. It was like a, a watering ski moguls. It was, it was intense. The Sea Keeper Rides took a phenomenal, phenomenal performing bay boat, which I firmly believe is the best in the industry, in all aspects. And it made the boat better. So <laughs> it's really tough. It blew my mind. But they react so quickly and level out the boat so quickly that you as a human couldn't do it. Uh, for varying seas and coming off of waves and down into troughs and so forth. So again, I'm not a techie guy, uh, but I just want to let you know if you have interest in those, obviously the whole boat's technical. So if you have interest in those, we can do it and you'll love it. If you don't, you're going to have the most outstanding bay boat on the water anyway. So again, thanks for watching. Come see us at Stewart Isla Mirada Boat Works. We can build the boat that you want for the type fishing and boating that you do. Thanks again.